Around 600 years ago, the Dutch used to make golf balls by stuffing feathers into a leather sack. With time, improvements were made to the ball, making it cheaper and more aerodynamic. Today, the golf ball market brings in around $550 million in annual sales, with over 850 million golf balls being manufactured and shipped every year. So how are they made? Golf ball cores are typically made from a material called polybutadiene. Not only does this material offer excellent resilience and durability, but it also has a high coefficient of restitution. What this means is that it has the ability to deform upon impact and quickly regain its original shape, resulting in high ball speed. Polybutanian itself is made from a process known as polymerization. There are multiple types of polymerizations, but what's used to make the material we're after is called solution polymerization. The polybutadian rubber, along with any necessary additives or fillers, is mixed and prepared according to the desired formulation. Then, the mixture is typically heated and softened for easier processing, which gives it a cake batter-like appearance. The prepared polybutadian material is then fed into a series of calendaring rollers, which are typically made of steel or other durable materials. The material comes out of the rollers in the form of sheets. Once the sheets are formed, the next step is to cut or punch out cylindrical slugs from the sheet material. Specialized cutting or punching machines are used to create these slugs. The slugs then travel on a conveyor over to a compression molding machine. Here, a worker places the slugs into the steel molds. When the door closes, the bottom part of the mold presses up against the top part, applying over a ton of pressure. The newly rounded rubber is also cooking at 160 degrees Celsius. This is done for a period of 13 minutes to harden the rubber. After the cores are cooled with water, a worker places a piece of slotted plexiglass over the mold. This holds down the leftover trimmings, so only the ball shapes get picked off by the vacuum. The cover or casing of the golf ball is made separately. The casing material can vary, but is commonly made of a blend of ionomer resins or urethane. The casing material is heated and formed into two hemispheres, often called the top and bottom half. The core is placed inside one of the casing hemispheres. The interior surface of the casing is often treated with a special adhesive or primer to enhance the bonding process. The other hemisphere is then placed on top, and the two halves are pressed together with high pressure to ensure a secure bond. The bonded core and casing are placed in a compression mold once again. The mold has a dimple pattern and the desired golf ball shape engraved on its inner surface. Dimples are crucial for the aerodynamics of the ball, as they help reduce drag and provide lift during flight. Dimple patterns can vary depending on the brand and model of the golf ball. Heat and pressure are applied to the mold, compressing the core and casing together and giving the ball its final shape. After the compression molding, the golf balls are removed from the mold and are on the move. They roll into a bin which funnels them into a golf ball elevator. The excess material, known as the flash, is trimmed away. This is done through an automatic miller which removes the excess plastic. The surface of the golf ball is then polished to ensure a smooth and consistent finish. The golf balls then undergo rigorous quality control checks. This includes measuring the weight, size, and compression of the balls, as well as inspecting them for any cosmetic imperfections. One way the factories do this is to use robotic arms to shuttle the balls through a chute entry. If the ball is not smooth and uniform, it won't go through this hole. Only the golf balls that meet the specified standards move toward the next step. A wheel rolls the golf balls towards a stamping machine. Robotic arms carry silicon pads to an etched steel plate. After the balls are branded with a company name, player number, and ball type, Ultraviolet light hardens the ink. Then, an automated machine sprays the ball with polyurethane while they rotate atop spindles. This protects the ink logos that have been stamped on the balls. Finally, robotic arms carry the balls over to a drying rack, where they are heated at 66 degrees Celsius for five minutes. The balls are finally done and are packaged and shipped for sale. A completed golf ball can have anywhere from 300 to 500 dimples. If you liked the video, subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comments what our next video should be about.